Farasika Mayday, a succubus booze-addicted pop star come back to make everyone horny. Let me say that again, a character designed to make people as horned up as possible. If she's depraved enough to satisfy Blitz, I know she's got some supernatural kinks up her sleeve. Smash. Blitz, played by the titular Brandon Rogers. An appetite for the weird and degenerate, plus extreme promiscuity, and an incredible aversion to emotional intimacy. Yeah, that sounds like far too many of my go-tos. Smash, Luna. Let's get your comments out of the way. Um, I'm not a furry, so I don't think I'm sticking it in a hellhound. Human disguised Luna, however, looks exactly like the kind of tall pale goth girl that I would both really want to talk to and also be afraid of. Smash. Millie. Honestly, Millie is what I'm looking for in a relationship. Bubbly and kind. But when you're alone, that same kind of energy goes into systematically learning what makes you tick and using it to make your brain and member twitch. Smash. Does Millie ever peg you? Sometimes. Wait! Moxie. Since Millie and Moxie are a thing, I think the only way I could do Millie is to get in a three-way with Moxie. Never watched a demon get pegged from a dark corner in real life, but hey, there's a first time for everything. Smash. Stolas. I feel so bad for Stolas. Like, I know he's cheating on his wife with Blitz, which is a shit thing to do. But she's a shit person, so um, moot point. He's trapped in the classic, this person isn't nice to me, but they have a nice butt, and I can't find anyone else at the moment to do these disgusting things that I'm into, and, and I still feel like I kind of like the paradigm. Also, pass. I'm not screwing a bird guy. Stella. I know she got cheated on, which um, hurts, but uh, paying Stryker to murder her ex-husband might be a bit far. However, she looks like girl Stolas, so I smash, but keep my distance in case she hires another hitman. Octavia. I need to remind you that her canon age is 17. Just because I make smasher pass videos doesn't mean I'm EDP 445. Pass. Mrs. Mayberry, the demon elementary school teacher. I get to live through all my school teacher and demon fantasies at once. Smash. The mom from the murder family. She's designed as infuriatingly hot for Mrs. Mayberry. Not only that, she has an extra hole in her head. Smash. The cherubs. All of these weird fairy animals babies are a pass. If you're into them, I'm putting you on every watch list imaginable. Secret Agent 1 and 2. They just try to hunt me because I'm some sort of critter, but I love me a brat. Just regular humans, huh? Well, in that case, go with the usual. Smash the girl and pass the guy. Asmodeus. The demon of lust. This entity is the literal embodiment of lust itself. The sheer amount of kinks in its wheelhouse must be insanity. Smash. Fizzaroli, the demon clown. I'm not into clowns, but have you seen those e-girls that have been doing like clowns play lately? They're making me ask a lot of questions about what makes me Smash. Striker, the farm boy assassin. This manipulative redneck really pisses me off. But if I could make it painful for him, eh, I don't even know if I could do a hate fuck. Pass. Chaz. I don't know why anyone finds this character attractive. I get he's supposed to piss you off. I know that. But I don't know what anybody would like about him in the first place. The man looks like methed out machine gun Kelly as a shark. Charlie Morningstar. The sweet Disney princess of the darkest pits of hell. Honestly, I couldn't think of a more wholesome, adorable character in any show. A face like Belle from Beauty and the Beast, unending enthusiasm, and the depravity that comes with growing up in Hell's royal family. Sounds like the perfect girl. Smash. Angel Dust. Six arms, an appetite for depravity, and someone who turns tricks so well that they do it professionally. In hell, not just anyone can be a hooker in the circle of lust. Smash. Cherry Bomb. Mismatched, torn goth clothing, a violent attitude, weapon arsenal to match, a body like a succubus and one giant red unblinking eye. I'd bomb her cherry. Smash. I say regrettable things all the time. At this point, I don't think I have a gauge. Vaggy. The temper's a bit of a turn on. Plus the giant red X of an eye would be cool to look into as we did things that I could never hope of describing on YouTube. Smash. Alistor, the radio demon. This guy is what I want to be in life. A megalomaniac with incredible power in the media industry, which he uses to control the masses and play them like pawns in his own grand unknowable scheme. I mean, a good guy who makes videos for not that. Smash. Nifty. She looks way too young. Dude, we talked about this. I don't care if you say she's a thousand years old. The FBI says you're going to jail. Pass. Husk. 
the gruff, furry, gambling-addicted concierge. I know there's nothing I can do to stop you calling me a furry at this point, so whatever. Still gonna pass, though. Serpentius, the weird snaky boy villain. Cool snake vibes, but I don't really like the old British gentleman feel. If you ever think old British gentleman vibes are cool, reevaluate that thought in your entire life. Pass. I'd fuck the living hat, though. Egg boys. I feel like they'd be one pump and then suddenly a shattered mass of yolks. However, there are a lot of them, so if I killed like 50 or so with my dong, maybe it would work. Smash. Katie Killjoy. I don't think she has a rib cage, which is not a problem for me. The real issue is hot coffee poured directly onto my cock. Seeing this, I think I would say what anybody else would. Smash. Tom Trench. Played by the one and only Joshua Tomar. I mean, the gas mask might be a plus. What I really wonder is if I smash, will he let me gaze upon the legendary Tomar Gemeralds. Rosie. I could only find one appearance of her when she was crossing the name of a presumably dead Franklin off a sign with both their names. And you know what that must mean, right? She's single. Smash. The Exorcists. Angels sent down from heaven to annually murder demons in order to solve overpopulation. These things are basically just owl people. Pass. Serial designation J. The formerly entire sexy murder bot turned into, uh, half a murder bot. She's basically a melted pile from the waist up. I repeat, from the waist up. Sounds like it could still work. Only one way to find out. Smash. Serial designation N. I like how the most likable character in the entire show is a murder bot. Did anyone else, after being on the horrible cesspit that is the internet for too long, wonder if the showrunners were about to make a horrible career-ending oh. mistake of a joke when they heard his name? Yeah, me neither. Smash. Uzi. Does anyone else find Uzi's personality on the nose and abrasive? This is the exact type of self-aware, angsty, emo girl character I should like, but somehow everything about her gets on my nerves. Being meta doesn't automatically make you smart or funny, Uzi. It just means that you know you're writing something. Also, I think she's like 15. Pass. Con Dorman, the spineless father of Uzi Dorman, who didn't try to save his own daughter from a disassembly drone because the answer wasn't a big fucking metal door. Even if there's a funny joke about breaching his back doors, that deadbeat doesn't deserve the smash. Pass. Serial designation V, the only remaining woman murder bot. I mean, let's be real. They draw her as pretty appealing. The crushing force of that shiny metal ass, plus a streak of sadism that would be tracked by any competent police department. Sounds like my kind of girl. Smash. Thad. I don't know why they gave him a linebacker name like Thad, because he looks more like a Smelvin to me. Seriously, he looks like the Home Alone kid, but made out of metal. Pass. Doll. Doll is honestly one of my favorite characters in the whole series. Mysterious, kind of goth, and for some reason is the only one that speaks Russian, even though they're all on another planet, and it's weird that all the robots speak English anyways, and is possessed by some sort of unknowable horror named the Absolute Solver. Then someone decided to take all these people toasters and put them in a high school, so I got a pass on this character to stay out of jail. Lizzie, a stereotypical mean girl with little more to her. I know a mean girl is supposed to be designed as vapid, but she's nothing more than mean and boring. Nothing behind those eyes is worth putting up with. Pass. Not yet a single biological naughty bit in the series, goddammit. Yeah, I guess I could use motor oil as lube. Wanna ask me if Pepsi is okay next, you big metal asshole? Tessa, the only reference to someone whose holes weren't repurposed from a pencil sharpener. We don't even get a good look at her. But because the rest of the naughty bits in this series lie somewhere between garbage disposal and credit card slot, I'm going with the fleshiest possible option. Smash. Absolute Solver. Some sort of Skynet ChatGPT AI that seems to be pulling the strings behind the murder bot worker drone conflict. While an unknowably complex, possibly world ending AI is really hot, without the physical form, I don't think I'd know where to stick it. However, the Absolute Solver's weird, unknowable centipede robotic hand critter, or GLaDOS from Portal, because I'm pretty sure we all know who this is really, has an entire room full of wiggly tentacles and vibrating robot bits. The slippery and slimiest form in the whole show. Sounds like a smash to me. Cordy, the spider girl. Bright blonde hair, giant eyes you could just fall into, and eight limbs. I wonder if she's got anything else extra on her. I bet she could use that webbing for some fun tie-up stuff. Wait, she also just might lay eggs in my brain and try to eat me after I fertilize them. But I'm not one to kink shame. Smash. Wayland, 
the comically inept monster hunter protagonist that also serves as Cordy's favorite chew toy. He's hilarious, but also spineless. Seems like the type of guy to accidentally shoot his own dick off. Which would help me. Um. Usually I find myself in a situation where it's a bunch of gross monsters and I need to pick the one human. But today it looks like the human guy isn't the best option. Pass. Joe Constance. The monotone voice plus the I don't give a shit about anything even if I'm about to die attitude. Sounds like a win-win. However, I feel like she'd be the stare straight ahead into your eyes silently with no visible change in emotion during coitus type. But if you ignore every red flag, you'll never meet anyone. Smash. Joe's weird little posse. Wait, is that a typo? Huh. Nope. Says posse. Oh, like a group of cowboys! Seeing as how they're an all-male review, I'ma have to bid these weird old guys adieu. Pass. Giannis, the pterodactyl that was attached at the neck to death. Um, While the neck definitely looks capable of a gluck gluck guzzle 69 420, I'm pretty sure that the dinosaur have died when Cordy butthole bungeed it into the ground, and no one wants a repeat of the last time I tried to fuck a dead dinosaur, so I gotta pass. Um, death itself. Is having sex with death a poetic way to say dying, or am I just sticking my dick into a monstrosity without the sweet release of eternity to look forward to? I mean, look at it. Completely formless and swarming with flies. Smelling of rotten decay. Who could look at uh, that and have anything to say? But smash! The Wendigos. The shadowy self-replicating cryptids that populate the outskirts of Cliffside. I'm not sure what these things are actually made out of, but I know they're not ghosts because I've seen them grab people. Since the eye and mouth holes are glowy, does that mean the other holes are glowy? There's only one way to find out, so duplicate yourself some sisters and let's do some shit that I'll never be able to drink away. Smash. Sheriff Pinecone. Why is this one even on here? I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. It's not even fair. Undoubtedly, the sexiest character in the entire show. Like, damn, girl. I know whose sexy ass we're putting on the thumbnail. Smash. Background Street Crosser. No, I am not just fishing for characters in a show that doesn't have many major characters. Background Street Crosser captured the heart of millions and is about to capture the dick of one more. Smash. I'll cross your background street. Whatever the fuck that means. Icon. An internetian cube with the power of a world-ending god and the personality of a scene girl. The way they animated the expressions is actually kind of cute, and the constant threat of being ripped apart at the subatomic level shouldn't be nearly this appealing. I'll let you assimilate my matter anytime, girl. Smash. I think they really came into their own, commercially and artistically. <laughs>
this one had blood and dropped a teddy bear. So I think it might be a kid. In that case, it's definitely a pass because I'm not some sort of EDP monster. And also, Kiri got promoted from murderer to child murderer. Congratulations, Hans Bonin. Kiri's weird, negligent, scrambly-faced biological father. I'm really not trying to make some sort of horrific intergenerational sandwich, regardless of how hilarious the last name Bonin is. Wait, I could say I'm Bonin the Bonins. Nope, nope, not worth it. Pass. Mr. Fisher, the literary professor. I know people have a professor fantasy, but for me, it wouldn't be with like an old guy. Pass, rather the woodshop teacher where all her limbs have been replaced with wooden pegs. Cleo, that lady that's part of Han's completely useless team that showed up and said that one thing that one time. What do you mean I'm just digging for characters? That sounds like something a dead man would say. Smash. Ivy Pepper, a lackadaisy bootlegger. She has a really pretty voice, and any girl brave enough to go toe to toe with a gang of old fashioned bootleggers seems like someone that'd be brave enough to experiment and get weird. Smash. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Fine, you horrible, horny little gremlins. I'll play Smasher Pass with the goddamn furry bootlegger show. You've finally broken me. This is what a broken man looks like. So let's get into it. Mitzi May. The brains behind the lackadaisy crew since her husband Atlas died. She kind of has like a jazz flapper girl ex Garfield vibe. I never thought I'd say that, and now I don't think I'll ever recover. Still, compared to the rest of the crew, it's a smash. Rocky. The psychotic personality is a plus. Riding a backhoe throwing sticks of dynamite blindly at a group of enemies is something I didn't know that I've always dreamed of doing until now. Doesn't make up for the probable clods swatting at my balls though. Pass. Freckle. The timid on the outside, pure joy in the eyes as he attempts to murder three people with a machine gun on the inside is always a fun dichotomy to have in a character. Problem is, that same light switch of a dichotomy could lead you to having fun in one moment and getting your eyes clawed out the next. Pass. Victor Vasco. The gruff, eye-patched bartender. I don't know what happened to Tony the Tiger to make him so edgy, but he looks like every dickhead bartender that threw me out of a bar because I filled a beer bottle with my own urine and smashed it over the head of another patron. Whatever the fuck that means. Pass. Every single one of these characters is just a f***ing anthropomorphic cat person and I'm pissed about it. I'll be lucky if I'm not the one hacking up a hairball at the end of this horrific video. It's gonna be really hard to say I'm not a furry in this episode and I blame each and every one of you. Zib. The head of the lackadaisy speakeasy band. In his current form, it's a pass, but if he could smoke those ciggies until he needed a hole in his throat, maybe he could convince me. Wick Sable. I'm not sure exactly what he does, but it's alluded to that he's pretty powerful and that he has a squeaky clean reputation to uphold. It's less of a smash and more of a find the really weird thing that he's into and blackmail my way to power. Asa Sweet. A hotel manager that doubles in bootlegging. Now normally this would be an instant pass, but being in this universe, it may be pretty hard to get alcohol. Smashing someone with a consistent supply of booze would be a pretty good idea to be honest. So smash. Seraphine Savoy. The charming Louisiana accent is a bonus, plus a deranged pursuit of dangerous situations. Sounds like we get along well. Compared to the rest of the damn cat people, she's a smash. Nicodem Savoy. So it's pretty similar to Seraphine, except it's a dude. Look, you gotta work pretty hard to get me to ignore the fact that you're a cat person. And this is one penis too many. Pass. Mordecai Heller. The primary opposition to the lackadaisy crew. I don't know exactly what tells me this, but I feel like whatever Mordecai is running with may be slightly more successful than Lackadaisy. This one, I gotta pull the business smash. Screw your way to the top, that's what they say. I still don't know who this they is though. Atlas May, the deceased husband of Mitzi May. He used to be powerful before he blew through his nine lives. To be honest, one of the only things lower on my list than Anthro Furry Cat is a uh, dead cat. So, pass. Shrek. You know what they say, Shrek is love, Shrek is life. He's getting in that butt with the threat of a knife. I'ma see how many layers that onion really has if you know what I mean, cause I don't. Smash. Donkey. I'm not a furry, but that donkey is voiced by Eddie Murphy. The same Eddie Murphy that starred in Haunted Mansion, which was my entire childhood. 
I would be doing a disservice if I didn't say Smash. Fiona. If she's an ogre, it's still a smash, because unlike the majority of the people on this list, she doesn't have a penis. However, I would prefer the human version of Fiona, but like the last call at a bar or life in prison, you gotta make do with what there is. Lord Farquaad. I can get down with the shortness. Height is no issue here, especially because you can throw him around. The problem is when screwing a narcissist like this, though, is they never reciprocate. Pass. The Mirror. I feel like there isn't a way this could end without both me and the mirror being shattered forever, both physically and mentally. Me because I broke it and my dick is bleeding, and the mirror because it was just fucked to death. Sometimes in life you gotta lean into hardship to become stronger. Smash. The Dragon. Look, it's a lady dragon, confirmed by the previously mentioned titular Eddie Donkey himself. Um. If it's a girl, I'm in no position to be picky ever since I fell flat on my ass in Shrek World. Smash. The Gingerbread Man. You remember that scene where Farquaad rips his legs off? That scene makes me feel like if Gingy tried to take my dinghy, uh. he'd likely end up in crumbs. The giant version, however, if they drilled a butthole, I could see that working. Actually, I'm also worried about getting crumbs in my pee hole. Pass. Pinocchio. I'm not really into getting pegged, so I gotta have to pass. But if you were into that, it would be a smash, cause you could just sit on his face and then lie to yourself like you already do every day. Puss in Boots. While the name sounds promising, unfortunately, it only refers to the fact that it's a cat. I'm not furry, so that's a pass. Fairy Godmother. I wonder what those bug wings could do in an intimate setting. I don't know if the word flap job has been coined yet, but if not, that just changed. Smash. Prince Charming. Medieval frat boy douche isn't high on my list. I'd make a joke, but he is the joke. Pass. Robin Hood. If he steals from the rich and gives to the poor, and this is a smash or pass video, I don't think the poor want my loads, dude. This has gotta be some form of crime. You're not telling them that it's food, right? Pass. Doris. Smash! The Three Little Pigs. Pig skin is the closest analog to human skin in nature, so I would assume that a pig orifice is the closest analog to a human orifice in nature, so that's a smash. Three Blind Mice. I'm not sure a mouse is big enough to handle what I'm packing. Actually, now I am sure, and I need a tiny mouse-shaped coffin, a new pet, and a hug. Thelonious. I don't know what's under that mask, but it looks a lot like other types of masks, that if someone's wearing it, it means I'm exchanging information with them as subtly as I can. With a name like Thelonious, I bet he gets weird with it. Smash. The Big Bad Wolf. How many times do I gotta tell you idiots that I'm not a goddamn furry? Is it enough times for you to comment that I am one yet? I think I might have overdid this episode. Pass. You all sit and judge from your ivory towers, but I see what your species posts on the internet. None of you are innocent. The Evil Queen from Snow White. I'm not looking for perfection, but I'm not looking for the type of personality to put a woman in a coma without any question or hesitation for the sole reason that a piece of glass said she was slightly hotter than you. Pass. Why are you looking at us? Your friend was in a coma when you got here. I don't care what the law says. If I see this, I'm fucking the shit out of it. Maleficent. Flawless skin, deep piercing green eyes, luscious red lips, and two weird little pokey bits on the top. Plus, someone crazy enough to horrifically curse a woman the second they reach adulthood is definitely someone that can get kinky. Smash. The Hunter from Bambi. This is gonna put me in animated hell for sure, but hear me out. The Hunter is an anti-hero. Quick history lesson, humans killed too many wolves and wolves eat deer. Not enough wolves to eat deer means more deer, and more deer means they eat more deer food, which means less deer food for the deer. Now overpopulation is a problem, but not a problem my cock can't fix. Smash. The Wicked Stepsisters from Cinderella. They're not exactly described as the cutest, or kindest, or the best smelling, but there are three of them. Hmm. The classic quantity quality quandary. Eh, screw it. An orgy's never bored me. Smash. Captain Hook from Peter Pan. The piratey vibe is definitely a plus, oh. but the hook for a hand makes me think twice about docking in his pirate's bay. I don't think I could get into it on account of it looks like a pretty thin line between handjob and mutilation. Pass. Ursula from The Little Mermaid. So it's a mermaid, but oh. instead of a fussy, 
It's got an octussy. I'm about to see what those suction cups do, cause I'm pretty sure it's in the name. Smash. Jafar from Aladdin. While the style is on point, he's even got the go-to dictator black and red. Anyone at this high of a level of power would probably be a narcissist that'll just expect you to please them the whole time without reciprocation. That's a pass. I'll fuck his stupid bird to death though. Scar from The Lion King. First off, I'm not a furry, so this is an automatic pass. Even if I was though, the retractable claws on a lion would turn my balls into a scratching post. My favorite thing about my balls right now is that they're not that, so I gotta pass. Imza from The Emperor's New Groove. I'ma be real, she looks like a purple skeleton. I wouldn't want to screw a female McDonald's grimace with the opposite eating disorder, so I'm gonna go with a pass. The Witch Doctor from The Princess and the Frog. Anyone who can dance so well that it pops back up in meme culture over 10 years after the movie is someone who can move well enough to catch the pipe. Shake my dick. Won't you shake up poor sinner's dick? Yeah. Bellwether from Zootopia. So it's basically just an anthropomorphic sheep. Did I include this stupid annoying sheep lady just so I could bait furry hate engagement and then reject it? Yes. Pass. Cruella DeVille. Call me them weird spotted dogs that she wanted to turn into handbags or condoms or something cause I'm about to get me that put. You know I used to consider myself an artist? Smash. Captain Gantu from Lilo and Stitch. First off, this movie slaps. Especially how Lilo's hobby is just taking pictures of morbidly obese people. Second off, this guy always reminded me of an anthropomorphic great white shark, and that's too many rows of teeth for me to get properly sloppily. Pass. Who? From the new Disney movie, Pooh, Blood and Honey. You know, I didn't really expect the sequel to the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh to take this drastic a turn in every possible manner, but I gotta say, the new bad boy murder bear made for a movie just watchable enough to earn a smash. Monstro, the big old whale fish from Pinocchio. I know for legal reasons, this weird big sea animal is a completely different whale, which is why I intend to give it some culture and introduce it to my Moby Dick. Smash. Thanks for the money, idiot. SpongeBob. The man's has more holes than any character I've ever seen. It's a recurring joke how many holes he has. I wonder if I could use him to clean up the mess afterwards. Smash. Squidward. I'll put those tentacles on my testicles. All those little suckers, and there's six of them. Don't even get me started about what we can do with that nose there. You know the getting's good when it sounds like... Smash. Patrick. You know he's got cake for days if he uses it for storage capacity. I have a theory that instead of a dingle, when you pull down Pat's shorts, you'll actually just see like another one of his heads down there. And there's only one way to find out. Smash. Mr. Krabs. When he's got his shell on, that seems like it'd be a sharp entrance, so that's a pass. When he's in his weird, fat, naked bubblegum looking ass form though, that's just entirely cushion for the pushing. Smash. Gary. He do got that one long muscular foot like all snails do though. I've heard of a foot job, but this is ridiculous. Smash. Larry the Lobster. The muscles are a bonus, but without hard outer shell, I feel like any orifice this guy has to offer would leave my dingle in shreds. Pass. Sandy. First of all, I'm not a furry, so it's an instant pass. But damn, last time I was inside Sandy Cheeks, I was on a beach in one of those little shit cabanas that the bums sleep in. Fond memories. Plankton. I'm not sure how this one would work. Any attempt to enter would just splatter his internal organs all over my walls. And I'm certainly not letting him crawl inside my safe to steal my secret formula. Pass. Pearl. The size of a blue goosey seems like something that would be quite loose on my member. However, I've never been inside a blowhole before, but ask me again after I finish this sentence and asphyxiate a whale with my cup. Smash. Mrs. Puff. I wonder how it would feel if you stuffed Miss Puff and she inflated while you were already inside. Actually, you'd probably just get stabbed with all the little pokey bits. So that's a pass. Karen, Plankton's computer wife. The urge to cuck Plankton is very high. However, it seems like it might end the same way it did when I stuck my c*** in the electrical socket. Shockingly. That was a stupid joke. Pass. Mermaid Man. The bikini top might have some of you swooning. Thing is, I like tits, but not man tits. Sometimes for a legendary figure, you just gotta look past the sag though. He about to find out that I'm set on Wumbo. Smash. Barnacle Boy. Have you ever seen a barnacle in real life? Let me pull up an image for you. 
I don't know if they call him Barnacle Boy for any particular reason, but I don't want to find out. Pass. Potty, the parrot. This is not the first time I've heard the marionette of a parrot, and it's not gonna be the last. Smash! Patchy the pirate. Now, being the only human on this list is a plus. I'll have sex with a fish, sure, but I'm not, like, gay or anything. So, you know, pass. The realistic fish head reporter. <laughs> Courage, the cowardly dog. If he's not in a weird, shapeshifty cartoon lady form, there's nothing that this purple dog can do for me. That extra trademark hole in his tooth, though. Nope, wait. Teeth hurt. Pass. We interrupt this program to bring you Courage the Cowardly Dog! Smash short pass. Starring AZFK. Muriel. This one's gotta be a pass. It's not any of the physical characteristics. Well, I don't have a gilf thing, but that's besides the point. She's just way too wholesome. Eustace. Now, some of you might think that Eustace is a pass, but the art style of this show makes very sure to show you that he doesn't have any teeth. When you live in the middle of nowhere, a wet hole is a wet hole. Smash. The Queen of the Black Puddle, a seductive sea demon who captivates men to devour them in her undersea palace. I'm not really a vor guy, so ideally it'd be other circumstances, but I gotta find some way to get in that ass, even if I'm being squeezed out of it. Smash. King Ramses. Return the slab. I don't care how uncanny you are. You traumatized a good amount of these goobers watching right now. I want to see how weirdly rendered those 3D bits are. I'll return my slab. Smash. The Spirit of the Harvest Moon. While one might at first think of passing this one because it has no body, this frees the head to go anywhere you want. Just saying. Conway the Contaminist. His whole thing is that he lives in filth. I can get as gross as the next guy, but when you're digging chip crumbs out of your foreskin, someone needs to draw the fucking line. Pass. Cats. Despite the pure evil nature of this guy, which is a definite turn on, I'm not a furry, so no, I'm not gonna screw the stupid cat fox thing. Pass. The big foot. I wouldn't say that I'm a foot guy, but I wouldn't say that I'm like, not a foot guy. However, the foot is a rotten shade of purple and covered in green pulse steels. This looks like the only instance where you could get gonorrhea from a toe. I've heard of a foot job, but this is ridiculous. Pass. Fun fact, did you know that Nowhere is a real town? And there was a couple that reported paranormal activity constantly before suddenly disappearing without a trace. Weird, huh? I certainly didn't do it. I'm not sure how fun that is, but I am sure that it's a fact. The Stitch Sisters. Seeing these two, you know I'm gonna smash for the obvious. Their unique personality. Nah, I'm just kidding, two BJs at once. What show did you think you were watching? The Bugle Monster. This thing just appears in your dreams and tells you you're not perfect. Dude, is that some sort of neg? You look like a teapot had a baby with Germa, and you're calling me mid? Pass. D Lung. Does anyone look at this character and wonder if some parts of Courage didn't age so well and then get kinda sad about that? Cause you don't wanna have to pull the, well, you know, it was the 2000s and uh, other parts of it are really good. Why the hell did they have to play the- <laughs> Give up, dog. I went back. New dog in town. Song every time he came on screen, goddammit. Pass. Fred. This character freaks me out the most of anyone in the series. Not for the shaving thing, but just when he says, Naughty. He just has a bad energy. I don't know what, but something about this guy makes me think he's doing something that rhymes with wild protester. Bathtub Barracuda. I'm about to show you the scene with him, which confused me as a child and left me in tears as an adult. I don't know how high quality I can find of it, but here you go. There's no such thing as perfect. Huh? You're beautiful as you are, Courage. With all your imperfections, you can do anything. <gasps> Anyone who says that has a beautiful soul, regardless of the fact that they're a fish that I'm about to fuck to death. Smash. The Jump Scare Violin Girl. While you might initially think that this would be horrific, someone with the dexterity to play an instrument is definitely good with their hands, and are you not seeing that tongue action? Smash. You see what I just did to all these animated monstrosities? Imagine what I could do to a human that didn't like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, and watched all my other crap. I wouldn't want to find out. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. Everybody. Bye.